What does this record have in common with this record and 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 this record? Shut the f up. And let me explain to you on this episode of. During the 1950s and 60s, record labels would designate their artists with a producer who would in turn shape the album's entire sound. Many of these producers would have their go-to session players who had become critically acclaimed, such as the Funk Brothers, Booker T and the MGs, or the Muscle Shoal Rhythm Section, just to name a few. Out in LA, a conglomerate of former jazz, blues, and classically trained session players were gaining more and more buzz as the songs they were recording began filling the airwaves. This gang of musicians would eventually be known as The Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew was made up of several drummers, guitarists, bassists, and orchestral instrumentalists who had made a name for themselves in creating a multi-layered, iconic sound. Some of the more notable names in the crew were drummer Hal Blaine, guitarist Tommy Tedesco, drummer Earl Palmer, guitarist Bill Pittman, or bassist Carol Kay. The Wrecking Crew also consisted of some players who would eventually break out to their own stardom such as Glenn Campbell, Leon Russell, and Cher who had actually started out as a backup singer on a lot of Phil Spector's girl group pop songs. With a catalog of popular records spanning from the 1960s to the 70s, the Wrecking Crew were known as the go-to players that made instant gold. They played on songs with everyone from Frank Sinatra, Nancy Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sam Cooke, Herb Alpert, Elvis Presley, not to mention a plethora of TV and movie theme songs. Here's a story of a lovely lady And let's not forget some of the most iconic holiday hits that drive us all nuts every year. Alvin! In their early years, they had played music for several producers. One of the more notable names was Phil Spector, who had developed a unique sound that was unlike anything that was heard of at that time. He called this technique the Wall of Sound. Spector would fill the surprisingly small Gold Star Studio with an ensemble of players that would create a complexing feel of depth within the music. Its outcome was a rich, vibrant tone that would make any set of speakers playing his artist's songs sound substantially louder. It was that same recording technique that opened up a young Brian Wilson's ear and mind to create something even bigger than their typical surfer songs that the Beach Boys had been known for. In 1966, while the rest of the group went on tour, Brian decided to stay back and work with the Wrecking Crew on the new Beach Boys album, Pet Sounds, which was ironically recorded at the same studio where Spectre had produced his own hit records. Upon its release, Pet Sounds was considered a complete failure in the perspective of sales, due to it sounding so unexpectedly different than what their fan base was familiar with. Although, till this day, Pet Sounds has gone on to become a cult classic and is considered to be a groundbreaking masterpiece within Brian's music production and creativity. God only knows what I'd be without you. By the mid-1960s, the music industry was at a turning point as the war in Vietnam was in full steam and protests were fueling throughout the US. As the hippie movement was beginning to manifest, the Wrecking Crew were beginning to play an entirely different sound for a new generation of listeners. Bands like The Fifth Dimension, The Mamas and the Papas, Simon and Garfunkel, or The Birds were just some of the names that were requesting to work with them. Eventually, that era ended, and many of the notable names of the 60s had disbanded and took on solo careers. Such was the case for the Wrecking Crew. By this point, most of the members had made a name for themselves, and were either creating their own albums or were being scouted out individually to play on a variety of records by big-named artists. Admittedly, the Wrecking Crew never would have predicted their influence on pop culture, let alone the dizzying amount of chart-topping hits that they would create. With being accredited to a list of songs so immense and diverse, it's hard for anyone to believe that it was these same session players who were behind them all. And while the Wrecking Crew is hardly a household name beyond the savvy audience, Audio file, they were inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame in 2007. Many of the members have passed away, but their legacy lives on to this day within their music. Hey!